I have accomplished a heck of a lot these last five years, and I've got proof in writing and typing. So today I want to tell you about lab notebooks and keeping good lab notebooks and good organization and like how I've organized like all 745 of my STS pages um, and all of the information um, that will make your life so much easier when you're like writing your thesis um, and you need to look back and find various things in various details and also just like look back and see like whoa like there might have there have been a lot of hard times but I learned so much, I did so much, like, I accomplished so much, like, I don't, i one of those people that has, like, really low self-confidence, and it's hard to see, like, how much progress I've made, um, as, like, a scientist and as a person, and then, like, writing a thesis, you're just, like, right, looking back at, like, all this work you've done, like, over the years, and it's just kind of incredible. Um, and so yeah, so I'm really just feeling kind of accomplished um, and I want to help other people feel accomplished um, and it really starts with like setting up a good organization scheme and stuff in the beginning if it's not too late um, for you just like and be consistent throughout. Um, and you'll see a theme is gonna be a lot of cross-referencing and keeping like the dates with everything so you can go back to your notes and see the full details. Um, and so I talked a little bit about this the other day when I was talking about how I make those like figures and that sort of thing. Um, but today I wanna give like a more comprehensive look at how I keep my notes um, and how I organize things and hopefully some tips that can help other people um, too. So yeah, let's take a look. Well, I keep both physical notebooks um, and also an electronic notebook and I take pictures of my notes from my like physical notes and like put them into my um, lab notes, my electronic notebook. And I even like, I keep a, um, this isn't this, this is my pages, um, but I keep a file, like a directory where I have it by month. I have all the pictures for that month as well. Um, so I have multiple sources where I'm storing it. So I make sure I have that information. Um, so I, I like keeping the physical notebooks and the lab notebooks because like science can get really gunky and you don't want your gadgets to get gunky. Um, so basically the most important thing with note keeping, well you want it to be organized and you also, the thing when you're like, you want to take the notes was when things are fresh in your mind, you want to write down everything. Um, even if that means uh, writing on your glove. Um, <laughs> So then you can like take pictures of what you wrote um, and you can copy it right over into your notes, um, into your both your physical notes and your um, electronic notes. But the, it's just really important to write things down while they're fresh in your head. So like when you're doing an experiment, you want to um, make your notes, like make notes right then because you're going to forget about things even if you don't think you will um and so you want to make things really descriptive um and even if that means like um using weird words like gunky and that sort of thing if, if that's what like the only thing you can think of to describe it um you just want to get all your thoughts down um and you want to note especially if things went differently than you planned um and so it's really important when you're doing an experiment. So before the experiment, you wanna like really plan it out and try to make things um, like as easy as possible during the experiment. But then during the experiment, it's really important that in your notes, you make note of anything strange or unexpected or any deviation from the plan. Um, like if it looks kind of cloudy or if you were planning to incubate it for 30 minutes, but you had to do it for 35 because you had to wait in line for the centrifuge or that sort of thing. Um, and so, um, when you do it after your experiment, then you're going to want to like format your results for the clearest feature interpretation. Um, and so this is what I was talking about before, where I was talking about like in my, how we, I make these like figures, um, so much more in yesterday's post, but I make these figures where I have like, uh, my chart and the data and everything. And I do this in a way, um, that I can like crop it in different ways. So I have all this information. I have all the information here. Really, really important is the date. Um, so no matter what you do, like I got in the habit early on of starting all of my 
like or not either starting or ending all of my files with the date um, this way I can search by the date um, and then I can easily find that date in my um, notes and so I use OneNote so I have like uh, I have a page for every day well not every day recently because I've just been working on my thesis mostly um, but for every day and so I'll ha in each page I'll have the pictures from my notes and then I'll also have a written version of the notes and so often what I'll do is I'll when I plan out my experiment beforehand I'll put that information in here too um, and when I plan out an experiment what I do is like I do like why am I doing this experiment so what is the experiment why am I doing this experiment like what am I hoping to see we're not even hoping to see but like what what if I what am I looking for in the results in terms of um, how will, why am I doing this experiment basically like what purpose does it serve um, and that'll really help you and if you make detailed notes when you're doing it like if you're trying to like optimize something or whatever it's like it's really really important to write down like every single detail and like why you did something differently what you thought it would do what it actually did like if it did if it helped if it didn't help um that sort of thing so these notes are just so important especially when you're looking back like five years later at things that you did five years ago and trying to figure out like what the heck was i doing um it's really important um so i also in addition to having the like a page for all the days or whatever i have um what's really important i can't show it to you is this results page where that's where i put all of those figures that i made um so i make the figures in like adobe illustrator free alternative is inkscape and more much more on that in the post from a couple days ago um but i make them in such a way that um, because it's a scalable vectors graphics program, so you can uh, basically save it in any format and you can blow, like, so I save them as a PDF, but you can then like blow up as big as you want and they won't get all messy and stuff. But basically I have this results tab and I have it broken up by types of experiments, um, as well as just like the, like overall, like quote unquote, like best results or whatever, not best, but just like the ones that are like for my paper, for my thesis, that sort of thing. And this way I have them all organized. I can quickly go and find um, the results if I need to like show them to my boss or something like that. Or if I just want to take a look at um, some results from before, but I keep all of my results in the results tab, even the, from the experiments that didn't go as planned or whatever, just so I have them there and to have the date on all of them so then I can go back and check them against the actual date to get more information about it. And I can find the raw data for them because I put the file, I put that date in my file name. Um, then I also have like um, this cheat sheets where basically it has like some key like formulas and procedures and that sort of thing. Um, recipes for making various buffers and that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, so that's how I keep my notes, the whole thing with like the dates and the SDS pages, for example. So it's important that you like set up some sort of system or whatever. So early on, I started keeping um, track of my SDS pages that I run um, with like a number. And so I save them with a number and with the date and then I can easily cross reference and then I can go back um, and then I can go see, look at all these purifications, um, see some of them weren't very successful. Um, this one was nice. I was trying to express this protein and it wasn't very happy, but this one seemed pretty good. Um, and that sort of thing. And so I'll have them up by number and with the date. And so then I can cross reference and I have this um, raw data I can always go back to um, and find out more with the date um, and what the experiment was and that sort of thing. Um, so date, 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 date is really helpful. Um, it, it's really good to get, have a good file organization scheme too. I'm not the best at this. Um, I have to admit, um, especially when it comes to things when I'm like just learning or whatever and then like things tend to be like all over the place because I'm just trying to like learn it really quickly and people are teaching me things and the files just end up everywhere so be really careful when you're learning especially to make sure you um, set up a good um, process for that okay um, so that that okay the other things I need I keep track of a lot is my um, is the other thing I keep track of a lot are like my protein is my protein. So I make a 
purify a lot of proteins. And so we talked more about before about like recombinant protein expression where we can stick the protein recipe for a protein we want to make into um, like a circular piece of DNA called a plasmid or a bacmid like I talked about yesterday and get put those into um, bacteria or insect cells or that sort of thing to make them express the protein. So make them make the protein for you and then you can purify it out. Um, and so I need to keep track of all of these um, different things. So I have the various like constructs. So I have my, um, so this is basically, so I have for, you need some sort of scheme for keeping track of what's what. Um, and so we talked before when I talked about mutagenesis, how we can make changes to proteins and that sort of thing. And then we give them these like terminology. So if we change like the amino acid glycine to alanine, we'd be like G91A, if delta to show a deletion or that sort of thing. But if you make a lot of changes, then you can have like a ton a ton of it's really hard to keep track of basically all the different constructs you have by just like by naming them so if you had like delta 80 to 100 and you had like a substitute like five substitutions or whatever so basically you need some sort of way to keep track and so in our lab we have this like database lab database where people put um their various constructs and it's also like what we use for like when we order things like everything has a database number it's just like whatever happens to be the next number in the software or whatever and so i just, just um adopted the technique from the person before me of just like using that database number for my protein number um and so then for each of those they have like i'll put the number that'll be like the code or whatever and then the like name of it basically so that's like a short name I give it and then the description so that's the full description of it um the vector um then the size like so how big it is when it's tagged and when it's untagged so when, after I clean the tag off um and then these absorbances um so that helps you with your quantifying with like uv absorbance um so you can find out this information with like um uniprop prop param which i talked about in another post and then also just like notes if i have them um so in my i can't show you my actual one i removed that data just for this example and also for this example like so each of these are normally like separate uh workbooks for me um, but so I'll have each construct and all of this information um, here and then I want to know the status of it um, or I guess this is just like the for the pellets or whatever um, so basically after we express the cells and then we um, centrifuge them to pellet them out um, so basically we pull all the cells down and pour off all the media so the liquid food they were growing in and then later we're going to break open those cells and purify the protein out but we end up with like a whole bunch of pellets that are waiting to be purified um, and so we have like these racks in our minus 80 um, so it's a minus 80 celsius um, freezer um, and you don't want to just be like digging around in there to try to figure out whether you have pellets or something um, and so i keep track of the when i express something um, I will put like, so each of the constructs, so each of the, I have the constructs, I give the same number to both the, like the DNA construct and then the protein that's made from it. Um, and so that code will be like here and then the longer name of it and then the pellets. And so I'll put the date and the quantity. Um, so the date that it was expressed and the quantity. So like if it was like four liters of SF9, which is our insect cell, um, a type of insect cells, then I put like the date um, and the four liters, blah, blah, blah. And then another helpful thing is that if you have um, on on the pellet tubes in the freezer, actually like put, put the name on the top. Um, and like if you have like two if you froze it in two tubes put like one of two and then on one of them and two of two in the other so that you're not like searching for like a second tube if there's not actually a second tube there and if you use one of the tubes like note that in your notes so you're not like digging around in the minus 80 um and so also like put the date on those tubes put all of the information put the date put the quantity put all of that on the tubes as well um and right on the top of the tube so you don't have to like pull everything out um, then once you purify the protein, you want to keep track of that too. Um, and so for each protein, I will put, um, so you see this bar is really weird because I took out the data, but for like some of the constructs or some of the proteins, I purified a lot. And so I have multiple preps. 
for each prep I put, so each prep is just like a purification. So for each one, I will put the date I did it. Um, and then for the storage conditions, like what makes per mil, like so what concentration did I store it at? What is that um, concentration in megs per mil um, correspond to how many micromolar? Um, so that's like molecules, a, a, mole a measure of like molecules per um, liter type thing. Um, but don't worry about that. And then like the number and quantity of size of the aliquot. So it'll be like, uh, often it'll be like two quote unquote stock tubes where I have like 300 mil microliters or something. And then like 10, 20 microliter aliquots or whatever. So just small portions that I can use. And that way I have a sense of like how much I might have left. Although I don't like update this after I use it or whatever. Um, but just from the beginning, I know like how much um, I started with. Um, I also have something similar for like primers where I have like they have a code just like the proteins because it's all that same database type of thing. And then what that primer is for. So this is like uh, this is typically like a short name I give it and then the sequence, um, the targeted construct. So what the primer is against and then like type. So is this sequencing primer or slick primer, that sort of thing. Um, I also have a sort of like cheat sheet on my um, with the protein stuff on that one of those notebooks. Um, where I just have the information for the sizes of like this is for the one I have this with my constructs in that um, same workbook. Um, I have the sizes of the various tags. So like the things we put on the end of our protein to make it easier to purify. Um, and so now I know how big they are and how much they're going to add if I add it on a protein um, and where I might expect it to see um, to see it in the purification and that sort of thing. Um, I think I accidentally took it off of here, but I also put um, a lot of times the PI, so the isoelectric point, so that'll help. Um, that's the pH at which the protein is neutral. Um, so more on that on the like PI and ion affinity um, post, but that'll help know like what type of purification scheme um, would be best for it. And yeah, so that really helps me keep track of my constructs and everything. Um, and basically the whole like, thing is just you need to find something that works for you um, and stay consistent with it. Um, and I really do recommend like those figure things and also just dates on everything. Um, the other thing you want to keep track of, of course, is um, the, the articles and stuff that you're reading. Um, and so I use Mendeley, which is like this free um, software. There's another one like Zotero. Um, there's also like a paid one that's um, EndNote. Um, there's like pages to or whatever. But anyway, I use Mendeley. It has this like web importer. Um, so I use this Chrome plugin, and so like on the top bar, whenever I'm on a page, I can then click this icon and import it into my library. And you can organize your libraries and that sort of thing. Um, and it also integrates with Word. Um, and so yeah, so it's really helpful. So you can like add articles in various ways because you're going to have a lot of articles. Um, like so, your your thesis is going to have a lot, a lot, a lot of citations. Um, so I have a post on Mendeley and other reference managers and that sort of thing as well. Um, and now I got to get back to thesis writing, but um, putting in all of these years of work into a document um, and a talk and hopefully becoming a doctor at the end. Um, but I hope this helps other people um, do the same.